Hello, everyone, and thanks for coming to the uh, Cabinet of uh, 8th of February 2021. Um, my name is Mark Allison, I'm leader of the Council. Cabinet members are here. Also got uh, Councillor Bembo and Southgate um, are both here in attendance, as well as various officers. Um, hopefully, um, everyone will be able to hear us and um, look forward to the meeting. Um, so item one is apologies. I have no apologies for today. Okay, so there's no apologies. Um, item two, are there any declarations of interest? I see no declarations of interest, um, so there's none there. Um, item three, can we agree the minutes of the last meeting, um, which was held on the 18th of January 2021? I can see nobody disagreeing with the, the minutes, so um, we'll agree to the minutes. Um, I thought just before we um, we went on to the main um, the business that's been scheduled, it might actually be worthwhile, um, as this is a meeting in public, um, for us to say a little bit um, to update um, residents on what's been going on with uh, with COVID in the last um, few weeks, and in particular. Um, with uh, developments in, um, in Pollard's Hill um, over the last week. So we were um, told around about this time last week, um, and we were the last council um, to know um, about, the, um, about the identification of a case of the South African variant being found um, in Merton. Um, and what I'd like to do is to take this opportunity to thank um, all of the council staff um, and NHS staff for mobilising so quickly um, to put in place the measures that the government had asked from us and to, um, to have the enhanced testing um, facility um, set up. Just want to reassure um, the people of, um, of Merton that it is just one case um, that's been identified and that it was um, a case that was um, actually from somebody who was tested several weeks ago. Um, and we know that because people in Merton have been doing a really great job um, complying with the, uh, the, the regulations and the rules and, um, and the advice um, during um, COVID and people have been distancing, they've been staying in unless they need to and they've been wearing masks um, when they've um, been out. As a result of that, um, the number of cases um, of COVID in Merton have fallen by more than two thirds. So we'd really like to thank um, residents for you know, the way that they've um, got involved um, in helping us to tackle COVID by sticking to the, um, the rules. Um, and if they have been sticking to the rules, which they have, then we would expect to see the number of cases um, staying, um, staying low. And we wouldn't expect to see a, um, a, a big spread um, of, um, of the virus. Also, I just wanted to reassure residents that the case um, and the activity that we're um, uh, that we're making um, is really restricted to the Pollard's Hill area. Um, it was reported um, last Monday um, when the news first came out that it was something that affected the whole of um, Mitcham or the whole of CR4. And I'd just like to reassure people that the affected area is just Pollard's Hill, but also that even in the affected area um, of Pollard's Hill, really you don't need to, um, to do any more than you're actually currently doing um, in terms of complying with the rules. There isn't a, a stronger lockdown, just stick to the rules and we'll keep the, um, the spread down. The only thing that we are asking for people who live in that affected area is to please get this enhanced test because then we will be able to tell whether the South African virus has spread any further. Um, I sh should also so, um, say that I, I am so proud of the, um, the staff um, and, the, um, and the community. Um, the staff have been out for um, Merton staff. We've redeployed around about 40 members of staff, but also many others have, um, have been helping. Um, and quite a lot of them have been out in the cold. And today it's been a bit grim. Um, so I think that we really should, as a cabinet, extend our thanks to, um, to everybody. Um, but overall, this has been a, a really great exercise. It's shown that we've got a great community. Um, I've been out in Pollard Hill myself and, um, and the reaction of everyone and the way that people have come together and the community spirit that's been shown 
really, uh, you know, proves to me what I've been saying for some time, that Merton is a great place and a great community. Um, anyway, as the, our staff have been fantastic. They've got all of um, what was required up and running within 48 hours, which I think is an incredible achievement. Um, and the last I'd heard, we'd have more than 3,000 tests um, sent out or done in, um, in just over three days. Um, what has been happening since then? Um, I have been raising issues um, with government and, um, and with others um, around that, that our concerns to do with, um, with isolation payments. Um, we're worried that there's a little bit of nervousness um, by some residents who, if they got tested and were found to be positive, um, would lose income. And because isolation payments are means tested and take some time to get, um, it may be that that leads to some resistance from people to, um, to get tested. So we're calling for the government to, um, to make sure that um, the isolation payments are automatic in this case, because it is so important that people do get tested. Um, and there are also um, issues with, um, uh, because of the way that the, um, the, um, the, the news came out initially, um, that, uh, that CR4 was affected or Mitchum was affected. We're quite concerned um, about um, residents being treated badly. Um, employers saying that, um, oh, you live in um, CR4, don't come to work. Or um, delivery um, companies saying, oh, you live in um, CR4, we're not going to deliver. Or I had one case of somebody whose um, uh, washing machine um, that wouldn't be, f some, uh, the company was refusing to fix it because they lived in CR4. Um, and I've stressed that, um, that there is no reason for, um, for work to stop in CR4. There is no reason for people not to come to CR4. And I'm trying to get the government to be even clearer um, that just because there has been one case, um, everything should carry on as normal and Mitchum and CR4 shouldn't be treated badly by anybody. So I'd like to reassure everybody who's listening today that we have taken up these issues with the government, that we are taking it seriously. Um, and that this is a very important thing to us, that Mitcham, CR4 and Pollard Hill are treated with the respect that they deserve. Because over the last week, Mitcham, CR4 and Pollard Hill have shown themselves to be an absolutely amazing community. Um, and um, I'm, after what's happened over the last week, even more proud um, of, um, of that bit of Merton and the whole of Merton than I ever was before. So I'll just close by sort of like saying thank you very much to everybody. Um, it's been a really great achievement and I'm really, really um, pleased with the work that you've done, your st the staff, um, residents, um, the whole community. Rebecca, uh, Councillor Lanning, did you want to add anything as the Cabinet Member for Health Services? Uh, thank you, Chair. I think I really just want to take the opportunity to um, echo the leader's remarks and extend my thanks to Council teams. Um, but also our voluntary sector partners, the police and the local NHS for, for mobilising at such pace. It really has been a, an extraordinary uh, community effort to be able to deliver three routes of testing within 48 hours, as the leader said, but also to provide um, reassurance to residents, both in Pollard's Hill, where um, although the data is still coming in from the weekend, it looks as though more than half of residents in the ward may have already accessed a test as part, as part of this um, national enhanced testing effort. Effort, um, but also the reassurance provided to the wider CR4 area following what was unfortunate national miscommunication about where enhanced testing would take place. And lastly, I just wanted to thank those asymptomatic residents in the wider CR4 area who are continuing to access where they need to, um, more than Assembly Hall, but also our network of community pharmacies to get the um, lateral flow test, which can give them the confidence to continue their, their role as a key worker, their volunteering and their caring responsibilities. So just a, a thank you to, to all those involved for getting us here. Thank you. Can I also... Um bring in um, Councillor Martin um, Welton um, as the um, well, very proud ward member for um, the affected area of Pollard Hill. I'm sure you've got some great things to say about your community there, Martin. Uh, thank you, um, uh, Councillor Anderson. I have to say it's been a great community effort in terms of the work that's gone in, but also as well uh, in terms of communicating to local residents to get um, tested um, throughout the ward. I think we owe a huge debt to um, council officers um, but I'd also as well like to um, extend my thanks to um, Common Side um, Trust and the U Horizon Centre um, who have been um, handing out the um, self 
self-testing um, kits over the um, past few um, days, um, but also as well um, NHS, uh, Merton, um, especially uh, Wide Way um, Surgery and Dr Mohan. Um, it's good that we have quite good community infrastructure um, in Pollard Hill um, because it does enable us to pull obviously a number of organisations um, together um, quite quickly. It's been a huge uh, logistical operation and the original information released by government last Monday um, was unhelpful, but it's important that once we knew what the exact position was um, to get um, clear messages out there for people to actually get um, tested. And I'm very pleased to hear this evening that um, over half of Pollard Hill looks like they've got tested and hopefully um, it will be most of Pollard Hill um, by uh, the end um, of um, the period. It's very important that people do get um, tested and this is a hugely challenging situation, but I think we've acted admirably in terms of it. Thank you. Yeah, and I should um, also add my thanks to, to you and the other councillors um, in Pollard Hill, Martin, for the community leadership that you've shown and Siobhan McDonough, the local MP, um, as well for galvanising the community and keeping everybody informed. I think it's been a really great example of, um, of all levels um, working together um, really well, which is probably a, a good moment to, um, to bring in the, um, the Chief Executive um, Jed um, Curran. Jed, was was I know that I'd like you to see uh, to say if there's um, any, anything further that you can add. But um, if I can formally use this as a chance um, through you um, for all of us on cabinet to thank your staff for the amazing work that um, that they have done um, over the past week. It's been um, a real brilliant um, piece of work. But if, do you have anything that you feel that you'd like to add? Uh, thank you, Leader, and I'll, I'll certainly make sure that those messages are passed on to all the staff. Uh, very little really extra for me to say. I'd like to associate myself with the things you've been saying, uh, with things Councillor Lanning said, and Councillor Welton uh, with his intimate knowledge of the Pollard's Hill area. It is the case that members have been a significant contributor uh, to helping engage with the community, as indeed has the local MP who has used all of her networks and connections to assist us. Uh, it has been a team effort, uh, as with most of the things that we do, uh, and it has involved many of the public sector plus the voluntary sector coming together. I would mention a couple of people in particular, though, some of whom have already been mentioned. I'd particularly, uh, particularly like to highlight uh, the work of Bob Whitehead in the Metropolitan Police, uh, who has worked extremely hard to engage their resources to help us. Uh, Moan Sakiram, who we've already mentioned uh, as a local GP, has been enormously influential, as has Naomi Martin uh, in the Common Side Trust, and Suzanne Hudson at the Citizens Advice um, Bureau in Merton. Uh, they have been particularly helpful uh, in assisting uh, with what we're trying to do. Uh, and as we've noted already, uh, we have given kits out to more than half of the residents now in the Pollard Hill area. We have had 40% of those returned already, uh, which is more than we targeted for at this stage. Uh, as Councillor Welton was saying, it's really important that people do have the tests and do return uh, the kits. Um, but uh, thank you to, to the whole community, really, uh, for the way they've responded to this, um, this challenge. Thank you, Leader. No, thank you. Um, and um, uh, we've give, given the rather awkward um, task to um, the, uh, the representative from Democratic Services to try and minute um, all our um, thanks and all the tributes um, that, uh, that we've made. Um, although this isn't actually an agenda item, it's something that's uh, been added at the last minute, but, uh, but hopefully that can be done so that we can put on record um, our gratitude to everybody. But anyway, unless anyone else has anything else to add, I'll move on to the, the first um, proper item of the, um, of the meeting tonight, and that's item four which is the Financial Monitoring Report uh, 2020 to 21, um, dated December 2020. Um, and the, uh, the lead member on that is uh, Councillor Tobin Byers. Thank you, Chair. Um, as you say, this is the financial report for period nine, uh, which takes us up to um, December 2020. This is the, the normal monthly report that comes to a cabinet to ensure that we are properly monitoring our uh, budgets. 
I'd just like to thank uh, Caroline Holland and Roger Kershaw and their respective teams um, for all the work that they do uh, in pulling these together and ensuring that we are uh, properly monitoring spend each month. Um, I just draw colleagues' attention to the, uh, the net adverse variance has uh, got slightly worse from the previous months. We're now showing a net adverse variance of uh, £4.3 million, pounds, um, down from £2.8 million. Pounds. And that is predominantly due to a negative swing in environment and regen, uh, which is predominantly due to uh, the impact on uh, certain income streams uh, in ENR uh, as a result of the recent restrictions. Um, I did want to just um, say, Chair, that there was a suggestion at Council last week that the government support announced in the spending review has meant that it's kept its promise to fully recompense local authorities for, for all of the work that we've done in tackling the pandemic. Uh, and I did just want to draw colleagues' attention specifically to page 17 uh, of the report, um, which provides a, a COVID-19 cost summary and shows quite clearly uh, that we are still uh, now over nine million pounds worse off as a result of the pandemic. And I'd remind colleagues that Robert Jedrick, Secretary of State's promise was that he would fully recompense local authorities uh, to do whatever it takes in responding to the pandemic. And that table shows quite clearly that the council is uh, the best part of £10 million worse off as a result of the work that we've done to support our community. And I think it's important that that is noted. I don't intend to go through um, the report department by department, but I think, as I've said uh, on previous occasions, um, a review of the report cover to cover shows just what an impact COVID has had. Uh, it has impacted every department in some way, either with lost income or additional spend. And I just want to add my thanks uh, to those already given to all of the staff for the work that they do in uh, trying as best they can to, uh, to keep to the budgets that we set and particularly in these uh, incredibly challenging circumstances I do want to express my gratitude to them and again to Caroline and Roger for their work on this report uh, and in monitoring each month. Thank you Chair. Well, thank you Tobin um, and um, the lead officer um, on this um, Caroline Holland the Director of Corporate Services is here. Caroline would you like to add anything to Tobin's report? Thank you, Chair. I suppose just to add that there is um, some further income to come from the sales fees and charges. Um, we will be calculating that uh, when we do the return for April. So you can clearly see the impact of one month having on the parking income in particular. And there was also some shortfall in our, our library services as well. So we will be looking to be able to claim some of that money back. Um, but we don't know quite the, the full extent at this stage. I also just wanted to say there were some further adjustments to the capital program in light of either reviewing slippage or as a result of a decision taken at the January cabinet around the extension of our um, financial system, we've been able to slip the monies in the program for its replacement a further year. So that has helped as well. Clearly there is the debt report, which shows the quarter position for um, December and there has been an increase in the debt outstanding which in some ways is understandable at this stage and particularly with, with COVID and just to flag there's been an increase in um, SIL monies not being um, received so there's going to be a review of how we look to get those monies in and um, so it won't have an impact at this stage on the schemes that we have funded through strategic SIL but there may be a further impact down the line if we don't recover those monies. And just to give you some assurance around the increase in corporate services on the legal services, we have been chasing our colleagues and the partnership for, for the monies due to us. So that is being followed up as well. Thank you, Chair. No, thank you, um, Caroline. Appreciate um, the work that everybody in your team and yourself um, has done on this. I can't see any other um, speakers um, so um, we'll move to the uh, the recommendations. Um, thank you, Tobin and um, and uh, Caroline and everybody. It's obviously worth noting that it's disappointing that the costs, the full costs of COVID to the council are not being met, um, and that this is adding to pressure on our budgets um, this year. Um, but I think, as uh, cabinet, we'd like to um, thank uh, everybody for their hard work on balancing um, our. Um, our, our money. Um, 
if we can move to recommendations, recommendations A and B in the report, are they agreed? I can't see any dissent, so they're agreed. Thank you very much. Um, so which means, means we move on to um, item five, um, the award of main services contract for Merton Adult, um, uh, Merton Adult Learning. Um, there's also um, some exempt papers here. Um, and if we wanted to speak to them, we'd have to exclude the, um, the public. Um, I'm going to ask members of cabinet not to refer to them and then we can carry on as an ordinary public meeting if that's okay. Um, and so the lead member on this is um, Councillor Caroline cooper Marbia. Caroline, do you want to introduce it? Thank you, Leader. Um, can I start off by saying thanks to Anthony and his team for the work they've done on this report. Um, but the report is about um, awarding the main contract for the provision of adult learning services in Merton. And the contract is for three years initially with the option to extend it by a further two years. Uh, the contract will uh, account for approximately 80% of the courses to be delivered. The successful bidder has made a commitment to providing high standard learning facilities and use a variety of learning resources for both accredited and community learning uh, courses. They are also committed to adapting their provision to the skills needs of residents and working to increase the number of learners on these courses. These are all very important in light of the COVID-19 pandemic where so many people are losing jobs and many will need to be reskilled. Also, young adults will need, to be, will need to develop new skills as we recover from the pandemic. So I'm very pleased that uh, we will have a first class service on our doorstep for our residents. The service had, has made uh, significant improvements since it moved from, uh, uh, since it moved to a commission model of service for other learning in 2016. It was awarded a good rating a few years later, following um, the Ofsted inspection in 2019. As a former cabinet member for education, I know the enormous amount of work that um, any educational establishment undergo when um, being inspected by Ofsted. So at this point, I really like to uh, once again, say thanks to all of our officers for the work they've put into this and um, also the, the current provider um, who have had to carry on a lot of work to be able to achieve this. So this is a great achievement and just like to say thank you to everyone involved. Uh, we received funding from the Greater London Authority and the Education and Skills Agency Fund to deliver adult education services in the borough. This is in recognition of the crucial role the skills agenda plays in equipping our residents to contribute to the community plan, which is aimed at promoting economic well being and narrowing the equality gap between the East and the West of the borough. Now, for this award, five submissions were received during the tendering process and evaluated accordingly. It has gone through all the necessary procedure. The full details are in the attached appendices. The current contract was awarded in August 2016 and will end on the 31st of July 2021. So this award is expected to commence on 1st of August 2021. And I therefore ask that Cabinet approve the recommendations. Thank you, Chair. No, thank you, Caroline, for your, your work on this. And it's a really excellent, comprehensive um, report you've just um, given. I'm delighted to say that the, um, the officers um, who are leading on this are also here. Um, uh, Anthony Hopkins, the, uh, the head of library heritage and education um, services here, and also um, Hannah Doody, who's the director of uh, community and housing. 
Um, you've heard uh, Caroline saying thank you for, for your work on it, um, but was there anything that you'd like to, um, to add in addition to what Caroline's just said? Nothing from me, Chair. Nothing to add, Chair, but happy to take any questions. Okay, no problem. Um, thank you um, for, for attending tonight. Thank you for the work that you put into it. I did see um, that um, a couple of councillors wanted to um, to add something to what Caroline had said. Uh, Councillor Martin Welton, would you like to say something? Um, thank you, Chairman. I'd just like to add that um, I was the Cabinet member back in 2015 um, when we took the very difficult decision to move to a commission service um, for Merton Adult, given the um, losses that the service was sustaining previously and it has enabled it to be put on a stable um, long-term footing in terms um, of its finances um, which it wasn't on previously but also as well um, in terms um, of the priorities um, for um, the service um, has to be in terms of employment and um, work so I think it's it justifies the decision we took um, I'm obviously very pleased it has got good um, in its offstead and hopefully uh, the service will go um, from strength um, to strength um, in the years ahead um, because adults um, education has a very important role to play, uh, especially in terms um, of lifelong learning, but also as well re-equipping people um, with um, the skills they need. Thank you. Awesome, that's brilliant. And um, Councillor Owen Pritchard. Uh, thank you. Um, again, I want to say thank you. Thank you to Caroline um, and Anthony and his team for doing the work um, on this particular, particular procurement exercise, but also for the people who laid, laid, laid the foundations for it previously, people like Martin, but also last year, the development of the adult learning strategy, which this clearly fits into. Um, and also thanks to the GLA and the SFA for the funding in this area, which without without which this wouldn't happen. But the um, in truth, uh, this project couldn't be more timely. We've got a economic and possibly potentially employment crisis coming up, and the one of the key web, um, tools at our disposal is the upskilling, upskilling and reskilling of our residents. So programs and initiatives like this have never been more important and I'm delighted to see this council uh, taking such a clear leadership role in preparing our residents um, for the economic difficulties that are coming. No thanks um, for that Owen, really strong um, strong words, thank you. Um, and um, amongst the, uh, the the cabinet members who've had this in their brief for a while is, uh, is Councillor Ali Stringer um, and it's worth um, noting our thanks to um, to her for her work on um, developing adult learning over the uh, the last uh, few years. But the, no no further contributions. Um, so I think it was just worth noting um, that um, that this work um, guarantees the financial stability of the service um, as well as the quality um, of the um, the service. Um, it's not a huge. Um, market um, out there, but it's good to have so many high quality um, bids. Um, I think it's also worth us noting whilst we've got the chance um, of the, uh, the great improvement um, in the service over the past um, few years, and that's a tribute to the hard work of many people. Um, so can we also thank um, our staff, thank the um, provider, um, thank uh, residents for supporting um, our adult learning um, as well. If that's all okay, there are two recommendations. Recommendations one and two on page 79. Can those be agreed? There's no dissent. So thank you to everybody. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Hannah. I think that may be the last item on the agenda tonight. So thank you all for coming and we'll see you soon. Close the meeting. Oh, Councillor, sorry, not Councillor. Jed Curran, did you want to add something? I was merely saying farewell to everybody, leader. <laughs> we'll all do that the, uh, the, the Zoom wave then. That's the end of the meeting. Bye-bye. <laughs>